Now it's best practice to name your devices and it makes a lot of sense to do that to make it easier to reference which device you're working on. Working on devices with the same name such as this example doesn't make management easy. So let's name our devices as per the diagram. The 5406 we're going to call router because it's the device that we're using for inter VLAN routing. This 2610 we're going to call edge 1. The 3500 we're going to call edge 2. And this 2610 we're going to call edge 3. It also doesn't make sense to use DHCP for the IP addresses of these devices. At the moment the switches have the IP addresses as per this diagram which have been allocated through DHCP. But let's set the IP addresses manually for easier management. It doesn't make sense to have networking devices use DHCP because the IP addresses could change when for instance the device is rebooted. So let's change the IP addresses and set them manually. So let's change the IP addresses as follows. The 5406 will have IP address 10.0.0.100 Edge 1 10.0.0.101 Edge 2 10.0.0.102 and Edge 3 10.0.0.103 all devices will use a slash 24 mask, in other words 255, 255, 255, 0. So let's start with edge 3, which previously had IP address 10.0.0.13 and is directly connected to the 3500. If you're not sure, we could do this command again, show LLDP, info remote device, and you can see that this switch is connected to the 3500. So in global configuration mode, we can type the command hostname and specify a name, in this case of edge underscore 3, you can see that the host name of the device has changed. Typing the command show run to see the running configuration shows me that the host name has been set to edge 3. On VLAN 1, the IP address is allocated through DHCP and all interfaces 1 to 28 are untagged on VLAN 1. In other words, all interfaces belong to VLAN 1. Now for Cisco guys this can be very confusing because they are used to seeing the command interface VLAN 1 to create a SVI or switched virtual interface. The same also applies to HPA series switches. To create the virtual interface for management on the device you would type interface VLAN 1. That's not true on HPE series switches. You just type the command VLAN 1 to create the VLAN as well as to configure an IP address on the VLAN. So we would type the command VLAN1, notice the prompt has changed, we'd now type IP address, we can specify the IP address which in this case is going to be 10.0.0.103 and then we can specify the mask which is going to be a slash 24 mask. Notice I immediately lose my Telnet connection because we've changed the IP address of this device but I could simply Telnet back to the new IP address and notice I have Telneted to edge 3. Show run once again shows me now that on VLAN 1 the IP address has been set manually to 10.0.0.103. To save my configuration I need to type the command write and notice we have two options memory or terminal. Write terminal is the same as looking at the running config so I need to type the command write mem or write memory to save my configuration. So now if I type the command show config I can see my saved configuration. Notice the startup configuration is displayed in this output. So switch edge 3 has successfully been configured with a name and the IP address has manually been configured. Now on our edge 1 device it originally had an IP address of 10.0.0.12. We can prove that once again by typing the command show LLDP info remote devices and in the output here you can see that port 1 is connected to a 5406ZL on port A2 which is correct as per our diagram. So on this device change the host name to edge 1 notice the prompt has changed again type VLAN 1 just before I change that notice once again if I type show run you can see that this switch now has a name of edge 1 VLAN 1 is using DHCP 
and all interfaces on VLAN 1. So now we can type IP address 10.0.0.101 with the relevant mask. Our Telnet session is disconnected, so we could Telnet back to 101. And notice we are now connected to Edge 1. Type show run. And you can see the output displays what we've configured. Write mem allows me to save the configuration on that switch. So we've now configured the two Edge 2610 switches. Let's configure the 3500 and the 5406. So on the 3500 switch, change the name to Edge 2. Go on to VLAN 1. Give it an IP address of 10.0.0.102. Telnet session is dropped. We could Telnet back again. Top show run. And you can see that we have correctly set the name and the IP address on the 3500 switch. Write mem allows me to save the configuration. Now lastly, let's configure the 5406. So go to global config mode. I come from a Cisco background, so I'm very used to typing conf t. But either works, con or conf t. Is it a tomato or is it a tomato? Different words, same meaning. So it's up to you which you type. Most network engineers try and use the shortest version of every command, which can speed things up. But at the end of the day, as long as you get it working, it doesn't matter if you type the abbreviated command or not. So VLAN 1, IP address 10.0.0.100 with a mask. Our connection is lost. We can Telnet now to 100 and log in, change the name of the device, so host name, router, type show run, and there's our configuration. Type write mem to save the config. Once again, unlike Cisco devices, you can do commands in any mode. So write mem works in global config mode or global config context if you like. So we have successfully configured our devices with IP addresses. To check connectivity, we can ping between the devices. So on Edge 1 as an example, we could ping 10.0.0.100, which is the 5406. You can see the device is alive. 102, the 3500 is alive. 103 is alive, which is the other 2610, Edge 3. And then the Cisco router has an IP address of 10.0.0.254. So we have full IP connectivity between these devices, including the Cisco router. On the Cisco router, as an example, ping 10.0.0.100. You can see the ping succeeded. The reason the first packet failed is because the router is doing an op. So in other words, it's sending out an op request for the MAC address of the switch. We can ping 101, 102. Now you'll notice that when the ping was sent to 101, there was a 100% success rate, and that's because previously we pinged from edge 1 to the Cisco router. So the Cisco router's ARP cache was already populated. We can view that by typing show ARP on the router, and you can see that a lot of IP addresses are displayed in the ARP cache, including 100, 101, and 102. But notice there's no entry here for 103. So if we ping 10.0.0.103, notice the first ping fails and subsequent pings succeed. If we look at the op cache once again, you can see now that 103 has been added to the op cache. So when we ping, we now get a 100% success rate because the op cache is populated.